Hey there, boys and girls. Nigel here again from nanitra.com. And today I want to just walk you through what I'm thinking about as we have decided to sell our public flat that we bought a resale government flat in Sengkang. And for the last two, three-ish weeks, I've been cracking my brain to mull over whether I should, you know, upgrade to a freehold apartment, freehold condo, right? I prefer apartment. Or should I move sideways to buy another HDB, but this time buy a new one, like a BTO. But because I have a third kit, I can get like a BTO from sales of balance flats. So the two key issues is this, okay? I think for me, the ideal is to buy, uh, to take the, the jump and go get the fuel apartment. The magic of a fuel apartments to me is this, um, land prices are increasing in price year on year. If you check the last 30 years, um, property prices are always increasing. They always increase, okay? So no matter how much the government has tried to pour water, put cooling measure, ABSD, things like that, right? It goes up. So I think one of my, my fears as a father is that I have gonna, I'm going to have three kids, right? And what have to, do I need to worry about if they can afford their own property in the future? So by buying... Um, by buying a freehold apartment right now, or as soon as I can, I can you know, solve this problem the down the road, right? But the problem is that if I jump from a, a HDB right now to a freehold apartment, right? I am in a comfortable zone where I'm in a barista fire. Barista fire means that you know, I, my investments are paying me well enough for me to not have to work so hard or not, or not be so worried about uh, money such that I know, you know, I need to keep pushing and pushing for more sales and more growth. I mean, I will still do my best, but having this unrequired need to push for sales allows me to help people in a more genuine manner. You know, I still want to help my therapists make as much as they can. I still want to help my doctors. Um, when they refer patients, patients get a really good uh, outcome from us. But I'm not going to sell for the sake of selling just to make more money. You know, so having this, I, I treasure this peace of mind. Okay? So that, that's why I prefer not to be overly stretched out by, you know, by signing up for like a one, $1.5 million loan, get a big space. And because I need to pay my loan, I need to work harder, sell more, and then I'll be away from my family because I got, I got to pay someone's got to pay the mortgage loan, right? So that's the drawback or the downside if I choose to upgrade now. You know, um, the upside of, of upgrading the whole uh, apartment is that I sort out the issue of the long-term, it preserves my capital, and sort out the issue of my, whether my kids can um, be taken care of later with the fuel apartment, right? The downside is that it will wipe out my, my investments. I got to work harder, I got to work longer, and I might not see my family as much because, you know, you got to work somewhere to pay the mortgage, right? And I have less peace of mind because I need to push. So that means that I also cannot retire at 45. I probably have to retire in my 50s. And lastly, freehold apartments or private, private properties are usually more expensive. So the, the space that I'm going to get probably smaller. That's the issue if I buy a freehold apartment right now. If instead I buy a HDB, so say I buy a new HDB, say a balanced flat, because I've got the third kit. Singapore government provides this uh, special scheme. You know, I get an extra priority to get a new flat. If I get a HDB, new one, 99 years lease, I get more space. I don't have to spend so much. I can, I can probably still keep my barista fire, you know, uh, I have more peace of mind. I have more money in my pocket to travel more, spend more time in my love one, spend more time with a being newborn. And I can still make a lot of ethical decisions, you know, that I don't have to push for growth, push for sales just for the sake of it. You know, and it also costs less per month because not every time if you have a condo or, or apartment, the maintenance fee, fee is around 300 to 500 depending on how posh or luxurious the place, even a thousand dollars a month have. But HDB monthly is about 80, 100 bucks a month, which is okay. But the downside of HDB is this. There is that 99 years lease decay. 
means that let's say you put five thousand down, you pay five hundred thousand, including interest six hundred thousand for your HDB. After nine nine years, the HDB has no longer its value because the lease is zero. So that is the only downside. So that is the two main issues. Should I move sideways to a HDB, a new HDB, or should I upgrade to a fuel apartment? So I have a few variables, right? So I three investments. One of them is a business that helps me to spread out my risk and stack my chances of tremendously growing in value and price. But, 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 but huh? it takes time to grow. If, right now, if I liquid them, I, I, I can probably pay for the fuel apartment cash, but give it some time to brace, still grow. I think it can help me become a bit of a full normal fire or maybe near chubby fire. You know, so I think because of that, and this is my journey based on my preferences, my cash on hand, and that I've already paid off HDB, right? And my consideration between moving sideways to buy a new HDB or upgrade to a uh, free apartment. But even the fact that I'm staying, I'm renting Potong Pasi because I'm trying to get my son, my second kid, my son, into St. Andrews Junior. So What's going to happen, I think, I think, is that I'll continue renting first. Wait and see if my boy gets into St. Andrews Jr. If he does get in, I'll be stuck here for the next five years. Right? In uh, Peter Diary, um, Woodley, top, uh, Woodley, Peter Diary, Potong Pasi area for the next uh, five, year, five years ish. And then um, if he doesn't get in, then I can free to move anywhere. And then I think if I can sign up for a New HDB sales of balance flat within one kilometer of a St. Andrews Junior. That's okay, you know, and then move into in, move in, move into the new HDB, stay there for five years, which also they take the same five years for my investments to grow. Then at end of the minimum occupancy period, which is five years, if I have more than enough, my investors do really well, we get I get to choose to upgrade or not upgrade. You know what I mean? Yes, from now until then, maybe five, six years down the road, property prices would have gone a bit further, but I have more certainty and I have option to choose. Right now, well, I sound I'm convincing myself already. Right now, if I go into the field, I'm, I'm locked in. Am I locked in? Or I still can sell? Anyway, I think I have more options if I take a HDB first. If I buy a 99 years new one, I stay there for five years, set at 94 years, there's a good capital appreciation, number one. Number two, buyers are more willing to buy. A very new, it's close to new, it's almost as new. 94 years lease remaining HDB out of 99, you know? And then from there, take the expeditional upgrade if I want to. Or if not, I'll just let my investment keep running and I just keep living HDB. HDB is great. The only issue with, for me, the HDB is the 99 year lease decay. That's the only issue. But other than that, I'm quite happy with it. But to be safe. So this is my journey, right? As I'm pondering and my decision making about um, I fully paid off my HDB and whether should I move that base or upgrade up. And I have some liquid care, liquid uh, investments that I can liquidate to buy. And so it depends on you, what you need, where you are, how much you earn, how much you have in your CPF. Everybody's needs is different. For me, I prioritize freedom. I prioritize being able to spend a lot of time with my kids, my wife, being able to have the peace of mind to make decisions that are good for the businesses, the investments, the family. I feel sometimes that if, you're, if one's very tied up in mortgage, you know, or loan, say that you, you're stuck, you need to pay 5,000, 10,000, 8,000, 10,000 a month, you must pay one. Then you start to get Change, then you start to change the way you behave. You start to, you're scared to make decisions that may be risky, you know. I'm not asking you to gamble, but sometimes then you may have to concede and do things that you don't agree with. I don't like that. For me, the truth is the truth is the truth. And I would tell you, I'd rather tell you straight in the face. I don't because I have a higher cost 
I cannot spend time with my family or I spend less time, I cannot travel. And then I do things that I don't like. That's me, right? For you, you have to consider what is your nuances, what's your preferences. But to be safe, I'll run this idea with my one well, of my wealth, wealth consultants tomorrow, wealth managers, and then I see whether my conclusion is the correct one or not, or if there's a better decision. If there's a better decision, I'll let you know. But my decision right now, I'm leaning towards whether I should, once I sell my HDB, should I upgrade to a free apartment or should I move sideways to a new free, a new uh, HDB BTO? I'm like, I'm really going towards the HDB BTO, you know? So I'll talk to you tomorrow. Take care, boys and girls. Any questions, ask down below. I'll answer every single question.